Hello everybody. Our next camera is a Yashica Autofocus S. Uh, came out probably 1980. Um, it was still around in 1981. I saw a popular photography ad from March of 81. You know, they used to have those ads in the back of the magazines where you, it was just dense lists of cameras. So this guy was 98.95 with a case. I think that was from Lion Photography. First, I was a little hesitant to use this one because it's so similar to the autofocus motor that I reviewed that I reviewed uh, I don't know five or six months ago. Um, then I thought, okay, this one came out right after. It might be fun to kind of compare and contrast. Um, you know the evolution of these things. Uh, this has a 38 millimeter f 2.8 lens. All of the Yashica autofocus series, um, you know, actually called that, not just an autofocus camera, had a 38 millimeter f 2.8 lens. There were a few variations though. The manual says this one is three elements in three groups. Uh, with the smallest aperture of f19 this one the successor is four elements in three groups and it stops down to f16 um, this one's shutter is from a 60th of a second to 1 360th of a second so kind of old school not a lot of range there this guy's an eighth of a second to a 500th of a second obviously the main difference um, this one is manual wind and rewind, and this one is motorized. They both use uh, two double A's. Um, this one has, uh, for a battery check, it uses the, uh, you need to use the flashlight and the viewfinder. And they both lock down. If it's too dim, they won't fire unless you pop up the flash. This one uses the flash ready light according to the manual they both have a flash ready light and a you need to use the flashlight for the battery check um, for winding this one says you know make sure that the rewind shaft is winding this, this one has a little uh, whirly gig on the back they both use a CDS cell above the lens but within the filter threads um, they both have this kind of ring for setting the film speed. This one goes from uh, 25 to 500. It's kind of interesting because that's one place where this one's specs are a little bit broader. This one's 25 to 400. And a 500 setting could be useful if you had, you know, a 400 speed film in it and wanted to use the film speed setting to do an exposure adjustment because these guys are full auto so monkey with the film speed is about all you get like the other one um, the autofocus range it only has four separate ranges 1.1 1.5 and 3 meters and then infinity and like the other one um, that has the indicator here there's an indicator here for what it focused on but it shows you that after the shot so, you know, you take it, and if it missed, you can check, but then you just have to take it again. Um, this one's shutter button. There's no lock for it, so you, I guess, could uh, potentially, you know, accidentally hit it in your bag if you cocked it. Because this one automatically winds and cocks, so it's always going to be cocked, um, it has a shutter button lock. Like the other one, this has a autofocus lock here, a separate button on the front rather than a half press. Um, you can undo it though. If you focus on something, um, the only way to release it is to hit the shutter. So if you got it wrong, too bad you wasted a shot. Um, the flash range is interesting this one is listed as 1.1 to 4 meters the newer one says 1.1 to 3 meters but they're both listed uh, guide number 12 meters at ISO 100 so I don't know if they changed the reflector or something or they just figured out hey our flash is weaker than we said it was and we need to adjust the documentation 
Uh, another difference, no self timer on this guy. The motor has the lever right here. And one thing that's really interesting, the lenses look about the same, but the Yashica S uses 46 millimeter filter threads and the motor version uses the 40.5. Um, functionally, they're very, very similar. Um, you know, I wish this had the shutter range of the other one. I do actually prefer the automatic winding and rewinding on this one. It doesn't have a huge impact um, on the battery life. Neither one is incredibly efficient compared to today's cameras. Um, so, you know, this one with a couple of that one's features, but manual, would have been nice. But, you know, that's the way the evolution of camera goes. Whatever the market demands at the time, is that's the features you'll see. So, I'm not sure what I'm going to do now. I pulled this one out by accident, thinking it was this one. Put new light seals in it and said, oh, okay, it's got new light seals. Might as well shoot with it. So, I used uh, some uh, expired Kodak Ektachrome slide film. Thankfully, that was my last roll. I did not realize how much of that stuff I had. I didn't want to buy more chemicals, so I've got more of those funky magenta shifts on this. So this probably deserves another spin with some modern, higher-speed uh, print film. So I'll run that through it, post the results over in the blog, and I'll see you then.